Let's uh, switch gears to learn some uh, R codes. <laughs> so that uh, uh, you're gonna have a second homework after after this class. Basically, uh, it will be very similar to the example right here. Uh, first of all, this is a th example we try to replicate uh, a textbook example. Uh, in Bataji's uh, textbook, there's some uh, uh, Right, right here, chapter 2.6, there's an example uh, to use a data set so that uh, show some summary information, plus some graphs, so on and so forth. Let's try to replicate everything. So I'll, I'll directly use R Studio to show you these details. First of all, uh, these sample codes should be on, on Canvas. You can download copy. Actually, the zip file contains everything. Right, a one zip file for all those data set, another zip file for uh, all those R codes. Uh, the once you open uh, the code, uh, the line there's a line to load the data is uh, the command is read dot table and double quotes Bataji e a r n dot a s c uh, header equals to two. So let's explain a little bit to this line. So we want to import right hand side. We want to import this data set into R and call it, we name it data. Left hand side is always a name. Actually, you can call it whatever. You can call it my data or data number one, so on and so forth, whatever name you like. For right hand side, we want to use this data set, E A R N dot A S C. Learning question. Uh, the data set should be on canvas. Uh, in this data set, data set Bataji dot zip. Once you download this data set, and so for example, for example, unzip it, unzip. You know the the folder Bataji contains all those data set, and so. Uh, what's earning right here? E A R N dot A S C, E A R N dot C. So make sure you unzip the file, right? I, I, you know, I'm gonna show more details in a sec. But go back to our codes. Right here, I mentioned is in Bataji folder, and uh, I want to use the E A R N uh, data set, the format of data set A S C. Later on, we're going to use the example such as Excel file, CSV file, TXT file, so on and so forth. But in this example, it's a ASC format. And I put in Bataji folder. And you may wonder, you know, how does my computer know where to look for the folder Bataji, right? I, uh, let me show you this little trick. I unzipped this Bataji folder, for example, for, First of all, when I download this zip file, double click and you're gonna see this uh, folder, right? Folder Bataji. Simply click and drag it and uh, you know put a location on your computer. In my case, I put I put in this folder on uh, on this computer, M drive. I create a folder called ECO6426. I call it ECO6426. That's the folder on M drive. M drive, that's the data set Bataji folder, right? So that this Bataji folder contains all those data set. So the little trick I want to show you is when I open R, go to tools and global option, tools, global options, click, and there's a there's a link right here. You know, in your case, uh, if if this is the first time you use our studio, probably that's blank, right? So I will suggest you to click browse and choose the folder. You know, choose a folder and then click open. In my case, I directly, I directly use the M drive ECO6426 as my default folder. So so this is my default folder. Then once you set your default folder, then every single time you know you ask computer to look for a data set, computer start to go to go to that folder, M drive, 
ECO 6426. Still remember, you know, if my codes, my computer codes, my computer codes call it read.table, but Taji, ERN, so on, so on, so on, so works, right? Since my default folder is M drive, M drive, ECO 6426, then computer starting from there and looking for Bataji folder and look for earning data set, right? That's basically the little trick. Again, set a default location from tools, global option. And uh, in my case, I choose M drive ECO 6426, right? And uh, choose, choose OK. And uh, if, if this is your very first time, I will suggest you to, you know, after you click OK, I will suggest you exit and en enter our studio again to make sure, you know, uh, it, it takes effect. Sometimes when you click OK, you still, you know, your computer may not eventually realize. I will suggest you to, to exit and open our studio again to make sure this uh, default location applies uh, right here. Question. Should be very similar. Should choose the default location. If it doesn't for you, it cause problem. You know, after class, I can I can take a look. <laughs> there is, but it's a lot. Should we? Yeah, it should be. T short for true. If you like, you can spell the full name T R U E in capital, but a capital T will be sufficient. So I've already loaded my data into a computer. I call it data. You can call it whatever name you like, but I just call it data. Next line, I attach data. Attach data. And so attach data means I will, I will you know, once you attach the data, all those variables in this data set will be already you know, in memory. Otherwise, without attaching the data, as for example, when you ask computer, show me the variable log which, computer doesn't know where do I you know, <laughs> look for the, the data set. So attach data basically means uh, uh, load the data into memory. Now we are good to run those uh, commands line by line. The first one, using the command summary, you can either summary a data or summary a variable log weight, for example. If you summary the whole data, then on screen, it print out the summary information for every single variables right here. For example, in my data set, I have exp, exp2, exp2 is an exp square. Exp short for experience, working experience. Experience square, working weeks, occupation, industry, south area. Uh, metropolitan area or not, marital status, female or not, union membership, education, black worker, log wage, male worker, uh, what's this, female education, that's not like. So some of them, they are coded as a zero or one. For example, you can see uh, MS, marital status, minimum is a zero, largest is one, so it's between zero and one, actually. So female also a dominant variable is zero and a one. Um, that's a summary for the whole data. If you care about the variable log wage only, you can simply you can simply you know summary the variable only. Wrong. So show the summary information for log wage only. See, these. This information is exactly the same as, say, minimum is 5.677, which is right here. Maximum is 8.537, it's right here, right? So on the first, it's exactly the same as right here. So either summary the whole data or one variable, whatever you, you, you want. The next two lines, these are the first one. I want to summary log wage again. But now I want to put a condition. What kind of condition? I want to print out, you know, summary of log wage for male workers only. How do I do that? You know, first of all, let me show you the output. This is a summary for log wage, but for male workers only. How did I achieve that one? See, the difference is uh, 
I put a bracket right here, a little bracket. Inside the bracket, it's n equal, equal to one. Let me explain. n, n is a variable right here. m is a variable zero or one, stand for male, male zero or one, false or true, right? If m equals to one, it means a true. If this, it is a male, right? If if m equals to zero, it means a false, not a male worker. In other words, female worker, right? So right here, m equals to one, basically I put a condition. Only this condition satisfied. So for that subset, right, I want to summary their language. So that's the condition, m equal equals to one. Right here, a technical detail is a, this is a double equal sign. <laughs> I probably mentioned this before, <laughs> but anyway. Double equal sign means comparison. Does n and the zero, they really equals to each other or not, right? Or if this comparison give me the conclusion true or false, right? A single equal sign, a single equal sign is equivalent to a, a, an arrow point to the left. A single equal sign, for example, n equals to zero. Single equal sign basically assigns the number zero into n, right? But now it's a double equal sign. Double equal sign is a comparison. This is true or false. For example, for example, let me show you. M equal equals to one. Gonna give me output true, false, true, false, so on so forth, right? That's the output M equals to one or not. So, you know, so that by default, M equals to one. So, so this condition give me a subset for those who only, only satisfy, only true subsample, right? So that's why, that's why this line print out the log wage for a subset. What kind of subset? For male workers only. In other words, only for those who this condition is true, only this condition satisfy, right? That's, uh, uh, that's the first half. Log wage, summary of log wage for male equals to one only, male workers only, right? So if you understand the first line, second line will be very, very similar. Print out the summary information for female workers only. Print out summary information and log wage to, to another subset. What kind of subset? Those who with a n, those whose n equals to zero only, right? M, again, dummy variable takes value zero or one. M equals to zero means male is not true, right? Male is not true means they are female workers, right? So that's why initially this is a summary log wage for everybody. And then log wage for male only, log wage for female only, right? So let's compare, for example, then I print out summary information for everybody. Let's let's you know let's stick with a mean, simple average. If we pull everybody together, the means average log wage is a six point nine five, right? That's the average for everybody. If you focus on the male subsample, the average will be seven point zero zero, which is larger than the average for you know uh, the pooled sample, right? The male is larger than the uh, you know, overall average, right? Which is 7.00. If you check out for the female subsample, which is a 6.5, which is lower than lower than lower than the pooled average 6.9, right? <laughs> Again, if you pull everybody, the average is a 6.9, right? For male sample, it's higher, which is seven point something. If you check out the female sample, it's a six point five something, right? So so far, so far, why we care about this kind of uh, you know subsample by subsample, one group by another? We want to take a quick look, you know, the overall the wage for male and a female, right? Are they look the same or different, right? So far, a simple summary information, we already find a pattern. Based on, for example, mean only, we find out the mean the mean of uh, male workers, their wage is high. But for you know, opposite from female, their wage is lower, right? So 
uh, why we care about this? For example, in labor economics, we really care about uh, uh, wage discrimination, or you can call it the wage, gender wage gap. In other words, suppose everything's the same, same education, same uh, marital status, same uh, years education, everything's the same, right? Same job, then male and female, the boss supposed to pay them the same salary, right? If we find any difference, then that's the evidence, for example, if you find male worker wage is higher, female worker is lower, right? That's the evidence of like, the boss, you know, discriminate against the female worker, right? <laughs> but right here, so far, you know, keep in mind, we didn't control those uh, education, job, and so on and so forth, right? We just, uh, just print out the pool, and the average overall, the, you know, in terms of men, women, their jobs could be different. Their education could be different. Their uh, uh, age could be different, so on and so forth, right? Later on, we're going to control everything to make a fairly compare if they're really the same, right? So, but anyway, that's a, a raw number, you know, from the very beginning. Let's check out some graphs. Histogram of log wage. The command is H-I-S-T, parentheses, you know, L-W-H. L-W-H, this, this variable is log wage, right, log wage. The, the, in the data set, the author already created this log wage so that we don't have to, it's already there. Then we plot histogram of log wage. By default, we have, we have such a graph. The purpose of the histogram is we want to check how the distribution to see is, you know, is that uh, symmetric? Is that normal? <laughs> right? For example, if uh, for example, if there's a law on minimum wage, maybe we have a tall bar somewhere right here, right? So that histogram is a quick way to check out distribution to see is that really normal or not, is that symmetric or not, right? Suppose suppose you find out that we have a tall bar as the left hand side. Definitely may not be may not be normal, right? <laughs> and may not be even symmetric. So that's the usage of a histogram. The command really simple: H I S T H I S T parentheses variable. Now, similarly, you can plot the histogram for log wage for you know group by group, male group, female group, right? The the way we do this are really really simple, really really similar. Just like before, beforewards, you know, we can pull everybody together and uh, summary the log wage, right? And then you can you can separate by group for the male group, log wage for male group, log wage for female group, right? Right here, exactly the same thing. Log wage, if we put a condition m equal equals to one, that's the way log wage for male group only, right? Let's plot the histogram of log wage for male group only, right? Let's plot the graph. So this graph, it's the first group. You can see, you know, the average right here is a little bit higher than seven, basically, you know, I <laughs> move to right. Similarly, similarly, if you check out the female group, the histogram, let's make it bigger. For the female group, we have high, low, high, low, but average is somewhere around here, 6.5, right? So far, we already find that their histogram looks different, right? If you plot the group by the group. By the way, in our studio, all those uh, graphs, all those plots you created, you can find them back and forth by using these arrows. For example, this is the log wage for everybody together, right? The center is uh, around here. And next one for male group only. Next one, female group only, right? And so if you want to make it bigger, if you click zoom in, then you're gonna print out, you know, pops up as a different window. And uh, if you want to save that graph only, you can click export, choose the same image, or choose the save as a PDF, so on so forth, if you like. But you, you don't have to because, because for our homework, we simply click a button. We can compile into nice HTML file, right? <laughs> but again, if you if you want a, a graph only, you can do that. Um, right here, 
this is a, a little technical detail. You know, line 35, what's the usage of this uh, line 35? Let me show you my lecture notes. The usage of that line, as a result, we put two graphs side by side. <laughs> and I said, how, did, how do I create such a graph? I put two graphs side by side. Very simple. I basically set option. I let computer know from now on, then you put gra create graphs. I want one row, two columns. See, in my, in my PDF, right? I want one row, two columns. How do I specify that? Very simple. I use this line, see, one comma two. It means one row, two columns, right? Similarly, if you want to say two rows, two columns, right? If you want four graphs that put together, then it's two comma two, right? So on so forth, it's very simple. So, so let's try. I, if I run this line, if I run this line, now from now on, if I run this command, for example, if I run this line, see? Only takes a left and a left and half, right? Now let me run the second one. I'm gonna put right here. The second graph I'm gonna put right here. Oh, no, 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 not summer. Uh, right here. See <laughs> the second graph, for the, you know, next to each other, right? So that's a little trick. So if you want to put two graphs in the same frame, right? So that's the little trick. Similarly. You know, up to you. For example, sometimes you may you may want to put it this way: two rows, one column, right? So in that case, it will be two comma one, two rows, one column, right? It depends on you know how do you want to put the graphs. And so you may wonder, uh, how do I convert back? How you know what if I want to convert to back to what I had before? Very simple. Just to specify. Okay, I'm done. From now on, switch back to the case. One row, one column, right? <laughs> Simply specify from now on, convert back to the case one comma one, right? <laughs> convert back to the case one row, one column. So if I do this, now when I plot graphs, it will be the single frame, right? <laughs> That's a little trick. Uh, for our homework, by the way, it's optional. If you want to put uh, the side by side, that's fine. If you want to, you know, all those one by themselves, totally fine. Totally, you don't have to. But if you want to try this, you know, that's a good way. Uh, next line. Let's check out this command: box plot, box plot, log wage, squiggle n. Let's check out the output and the end. Um, The command is box plot log weight squiggle n. First of all, what's a box plot? Box plot, see, we create a box right here, right? We create a box right here. Actually, let me show you without a little squiggle what happens. Without the little squiggle n, let me show you what happens. That's the box plot for everybody. Right? We pull everybody together and uh, draw a box plot for, of log wage. I didn't put this in the lecture notes, but uh, you know you can do it very, very simply by yourself. If you box plot log wage, then this is a box plot for log wage only, for put everybody together, right? How do we read this graph? The box, the, in the middle, we have a dark, uh, dark black line. That's the median of log wage. And uh, the upper, you know, upper line, lower line of the box, they correspond to the first quartile, third quartile of the summer information. First quartile, third quartile, they are 25%, uh, 75%, right? The, the median is a uh, 50%, right? So basically they are 25%, 50%, 75% quantile, right? Then how about these, uh, uh, these solid lines. Solid line, they are, you know, based on the width of this box, based on the width of, uh, you know, how wide, how, how tall, you know, not width, height of the box, right? We, you know, we multiply by 1.5, so that calculate, calculate the range right here, 
calculate the range right here, draw a line right here. Similarly, on, on top, also draw a line right here. Again, the distance right here is 1.5 times times the height of the box. Draw a line right here. So box plot, call it minimum and maximum, but they are not really the minimum, maximum of the data because see, we have some circles right here. So box plot, our studio call them outliers. If they are, if they beyond those lines, our studio basically call them that they're too small, too large, right? So our, you know, box plot call them outliers. That's basically the idea. So that's the box plot. Then we pull everybody together. Now go back to the graph. If you add a little squiggle to M, the corresponding graph will be right here. We separate them by M. M equals to zero, M equals to one, right? You see, M equals to zero graph, M equals to one graph, put them side by side. So that you don't have to, you don't have to plot two graphs, you know, for the condition M equals to zero, M equals to one, right? That's a quick way to, to, to put two box plots side by side, right? So that's a, you know, a nice way to put them together. Again, for example, Right hand side, M equals to one. They are male workers. Male workers, see? The median is kind of higher, 7.0 something, right? For female group, left hand side, median is lower, which is a, a, about 6.5, right? So basically, box plot is a graph version of our summary information, right? <laughs> Box plot is a graph version of our summary information. Summary information, remember, we plot summary information for male, for female, and also if you want, you can put everything together, right? So now box plot is a quick way to, to visualize your summary information, you know, by using a graph, right? That's the nice part about box plot. You can you can buy groups, right? Uh Next one, let's plot uh, y over x. We want to plot a graph log wage over weeks. We want to see you know, the relationship between log wage and the number of weeks you work. The command is simply plot, plot y squiggle x. So by default, the first one is our y, second one is our x is always y is our y-axis. X, of course, x-axis, right? So I will suggest you always use this kind of formula, plot y squiggle x, so that you never make a mistake. You, you, know, you don't want to put it in the wrong location, right? Uh, technical speaking, plot, plot has two ways to do it. You can either plot y squiggle x or plot x comma y. But personally, I always suggest you to use a first way, plot y squiggle x, so that you never make a mistake. You always put y in front and then squiggle x, right? So that's the, personally, I would always suggest you use it this way, y squiggle x, so that the first variable always put at the y axis, right? Let's check out the graph again. So that in my graph, you can see number of working weeks, so between 20, uh, between 10 and 50, that's the variation. Log wage variation is right here from six varies to eight, right? Most of my data located right there over here, right? Most of workers actually, their working weeks kind of close between 40 and 50. So later on, we're gonna discuss this in detail. Uh, we want a variation in our data set, especially in terms of X, for example, in terms of our uh, working weeks, we want a variation. Some of them works along, some are working less. In other words, for example, we don't want the case, for example, everybody works uh, 20 weeks, right? In that case, if everybody has the same working weeks, then we have no idea if they work longer or less, then what happens to their wage, right? So, so that's why right here, we want, we want a variation in their X, which is a WKS, working weeks. 
some works a longer time, some some of them works a less time, so that we can compare them, so that we can we have a better idea. When they work longer time, then what happens to their wage? Increase or decrease? Increase then by how much? Decrease by how much? Right? We're gonna discuss more later on. Uh, next one. We have only two lines uh, left. Next line, COR. COR short for correlation. As we want to check out the correlation between EXP, which is working experience, and the uh, log wage. Right here, recall correlation is a number between zero and one, right? <laughs> In terms of absolute value, right? <laughs> and right here, the correlation is a 0 0.08, kind of small kind of close to the zero side, right? So it means a positive correlation, uh, but uh, kind of small, right? Kind of close to zero, right? Right here, let me show you the output and then explain a little bit the uh, command. Right here, if you have more than two variables, if you have two more, uh, more than two variables, and so it will take a long time if you check out correlation between A and a B, A and a C is a and D, or B, B and a C, B and a D, and so on. It's too troublesome. We can calculate the correlation matrix altogether, which is uh, right here, for example. Then we have three variables right here. We can plot, uh, print out their correlation in such a matrix. For example, the first number on diagonal numbers, experience and experience. The correlation between experience and it itself, of course, is one, right? And the second number, the correlation between experience and uh, log wage, 0 0.087, which is actually exactly the same result right here, right? The next one, the correlation between EXP, working experience, and your education, which is a negative 0 0.22, right? So that right here, we already check out the correlation between all those combinations. And the uh, second variable, log wage over experience. This is, uh, first of all, this matrix is uh, symmetric, right? So basically this number is exactly the same as right here. So over diagonal, it's a symmetric, right? Uh, log wage and education, which is a, six point, a 0 0.45, right? which is also the same as right here, right? These two, they must be the same, right? And diagonal, again, this one and that one, they are the same, right? So this is a correlation matrix so that especially you have many, many variables. You don't want to check out the correlation between every single two, that's too troublesome. So that we can, we can put everybody together and print out correlation. How did I do that? Very simple. I use a command C bind those variables. C bind means uh, column wise bind, combine all those variables together. So if you run C bind those variables, let me show you. C bind put these three all together, the column wise side by side, I combine everything together, right? And then a correlation of those, those three columns so that create my correlation matrix. That's basically the idea. So I use combination C bind those whatever variables I want and then check out the correlation of those, those variables I put in there. So I got to the matrix, right? <laughs> so uh, any questions so far about, uh, about any commands? Uh, if not, let me talk about our homework. Uh, 